it is important to realize that today's New Ager is probably pretty representative of the average global citizen. Number one, we can say that he or she is very committed to preserving the Earth. Number two, their commitment to world community outweighs commitment to a country or an individual. And number three, the well-used slogan, Unity in Diversity, is taken very seriously. This means that you can be diverse, but that diversity had better not compromise the overall unity of world citizens. More simply, you can believe what you want, but you'd better not force that belief on anyone else, and you'd better not claim that your view is superior or more correct than anyone else's. This has obvious implications for the Christian. The Gospel proclamation that there is one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved and its corresponding teachings flies in the face of New Age theology. Significantly, the scriptures speak of a revived Roman Empire in the last days. In the original Roman Empire, Christians were put to death, not because they said Jesus was God, but because they said that he was the only God. It is little wonder, then, that the scriptures tell us that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. One perfect example of this is what spirit guides are revealing to Barbara Marks Hubbard. Hubbard is a leading New Ager and was one of the vice presidential nominees for the Democratic Party in 1984. She has written a book called The Book of Co-Creation, which she says was dictated to her by her spirit guides. Humanity will not be able to make the transition from earth only to universal life until the chaff has been separated from the wheat. The great reaper must reap before we can take the quantum leap to the next phase of evolution. Evolution empowers the horseman upon the red horse to kill that which cannot love God, and himself as the Son of God. This act is as horrible as killing a cancer cell. It must be done for the future of the whole. Peter Russell, the author of The Global Brain, and John Randolph Price also revealed that their spirit guides are speaking of a coming removal of the cancer cells who stand in the way of the quantum leap into the New Age. Benjamin Krem, self-appointed prophet of Lord Maitreya, said that those cancer cells have to be annihilated or face the sword of cleavage. Even the seemingly harmless Shirley MacLaine was quoted in Newsweek as saying, Tune into your higher self, or else. Of course, the list could go on and on, but let's leave you with one final example of the type of statement that's becoming all too common in the New Age today. These are the words of Ruth Montgomery, a leading New Ager. Those who survive the shift will be a different type of people from those in the physical form today, freed from strife and hatred. The souls who helped bring on the chaos of the present century will have passed into spirit to rethink their attitudes. Well, you know, we talked about the hundredth monkey theory, and we talked about the fact that there are millions and millions of people who believe if we all just get together and hold hands and think thoughts of peace, those thoughts will be transferred to the entire world community, and suddenly we'll have world peace. But now we're hearing also that what they're saying is... There are cancer cells who stand in the way. They're preventing this unity from taking place. And my goodness, what do they say here? Those people who believe they have the only truth are going to be removed into the spirit to rethink their attitudes. I hope what you realize is taking place here is, in this New Age belief system, you have a total contrary point of view for what's taking place when the rapture takes place. Well, the cardinal sin of the day is being inflexible and saying we have the ultimate truth here and the new age gospel certainly likes to put unity above truth and so that's going to be a problem obviously for the christians and, and that's why they have their explanation in there place. is this hatred growing for the christians and it fits exactly with the bible revelation chapter 13 verse 6 speaking of the antichrist you know that we know the first things out of his mouth when he arises on the world scene the first thing he says to the world community and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. In other words, all the people who have gone in the rapture as well, the saints. The world is suddenly united saying, thank goodness these people are out of the way now. They've passed into the spirit to rethink their attitudes. And now we can begin our new world here on this earth. So whereas the gospel promises a new heavens and a new earth, the New Age movement is very much about this earth, and that's why the environment and so on is playing such a big role in this whole New Age movement that's arising on the world scene today.